Right, take two, because take one was f fucking dreadful. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sane Asylum. Ah. Where the only electricity we use is for ECT. <sighs> So yeah, so yeah, the first record video, well, vinyl update of 2019. Good Lord, where does the time go? Where does it go? God, my hair's long. Ooh, need a haircut badly. So yeah, in this video, we're going to be looking at... Eight records, eight records, so... So here we go. Are you ready? Well, if you're not, fuck it. So, so the first record we're going to look at is Iggy Pop, the Godfather of Punk. So yeah, so this is from Iggy's. Well, another, another, another comeback from Mr. Pop because you'd be early the 80s was a very very messy i imagine confusing and painful time for iggy pop because he had the just 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 take just took too much drugs you know and and each and each album was getting more and unfo more unfocused than the, the than than the next album like soldier it's not a I wouldn't say it was a terrible album from 1980. It's not a bad album, but it it it, it, it lacks the the cohesiveness of new val new values and um, and of course lust of life in the idiot. You know, I mean, it, 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 I don't think Iggy Pop won't knew what direction to go in really because it sort of it sort of sounds like a messy hybrid of XTC and Devo, you know, those really bouncy, eccentric keyboards, you know, like as typified on local Mosquito, and then, and like I said, the albums he made throughout the years kept getting, wor kept getting worse and worse and worse, and of course he owed a lot of money to IRS, as you do, bastards. I mean, they were bastards, they were, you know, the, the, the 70s, no wonder everyone was a fucking tax exile in the fucking 70s, ripping, ripping, ripping everyone off, you know, I, I, if, if, if I was in, if I was, if I was a fucking famous rock star, you know, fucking banging loads of fucking chicks and fucking, and wrote fucking whole lot of love and all those clap and whatever, I'd be like, I'd be, and, and you're taking all of and taking half my money off me, I would fucking, I would fuck off to, the Virgin Islands or Barbados. You know, they were absolute bastards, they were. Absolute bastards, they were. You know, take, take, just taking money off, taking money off musicians. Well, over, over taxing them, you know, so, so Iggy, Iggy was in, Iggy, Iggy was in turmoil, he was in peril. And of course, who are you going to call? Not Ghostbusters, no. Mr. Mr. David Bowie. So David Bowie again, you know, helped Iggy get through all his trials and tribulations and to make this album. You know, but I mean, Bo him and Bowie went back a long time. You know, since the early 70s where Bowie produced uh, Raw Power, the Stooges, the Stooges final album up to that point. Before they reformed in the 2000s, so so they went back a long time, you know. Bowie, Bowie, him and Bowie and Popper, Dennis Hopper, used to go. Used to when he had his breakdown after the Stooges imploded, they were they were they were slipping in drugs. Can you imagine that being in a mental inst institute and one of your best friends slips you drugs, right? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go and see Mr. Ostenberg now. I am seen for the last hour or two. He's been very quiet. Let's see what he's like now. Uh, Mr. Ostenberg? Mr. Ostenberg? 
Why are you trying to eat your own shit? Mr. Ostenberg! What are you doing to that bed? Mr. Ostenberg, what are you doing with that wire? Oh, I, 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 I'm trying. I'm trying to get electric shock to get stoned. I like to get stoned and run around naked, cause I'm Iggy fucking pop. Oh my fucking god! Oh my god! Oh, I'm gonna have to call a doctor. Doctor, Doctor Pratt. Doctor Pratt. Doctor Pratt. What is it? What is it? What is it, Jenkins? I'm in an important meeting here. Well, I hate to break it to you, but Mr. Rostenberg has, has, has just electrocuted himself up his nostrils. Oh, my God. Cancel this meeting. Hold my calls. You know, it'd be absolutely ludicrous. If. If, if, some, if somebody slipped you drugs in a mental institute. But, you know. Ah, the good old 70s. The good old days. So, yeah, so Bowie helped. I mean, Bowie. I mean, Bowie in the 80s. He's, you know, he was. He went, he went for a radical change as well. He went from. He went, he was a, he was a fucking superstar. You know, as, as he described his Phil Collins years. And, you know, he was making covers of Iggy Pop songs to help him out as well. You know, the version of Tonight with Tina Turner, which is a fucking awful song. Just terrible, 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 terrible. You know, so he was doing that for him. You know, and... Um, but this is... this. To be honest, this is probably the best work Bowie did in the 1980s, apart from, apart from the Lavram soundtrack, this is probably his best work. And it, and, and it does, to be honest, it does typify... The mid eighties sound, you know, like everyone was 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 using a synthesizer. Everyone, everyone, every genre was using a synthesizer. You know, um, metal bands are using synthesizers. You know, a lot of, most pop acts were using synthesizers. You know, it was the synth decade, and even Neil Young was using synthesizers. You know, that, that, you know, that Canadian, that dry Canadian with his draw, it's like, uh, KJ, KJ Galway, it's not forgotten, this is a story of a Johnny Rotten. You know, even a folky was using synthesizers. I imagine Bob Dylan was probably using synthesizers as well. Every fucker was using a synthesizer. And you're probably thinking, well, your name's your name is Synth John. Why are you bitching and moaning about synthesizers being used? Because they, because the re I'll give you my reason. Because it was just, it was just over, it was just overburdened with them. You know, complete. You know, you know the mid '80s to me, the sound is very a, a form of constrict, constricting conservatism. Conservatism, you know, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike foreigner, but that is. A, but, but they are a classic example of the times, the mid eighties. You know, I want to know what love is. You know that bombastic ballads with. You know the the more synthesizers on there, the better. You know it. it, it and and and. and you know, this album has that mid eighties sound. It hasn't aged the the sound hasn't aged well. But I would be lying to say if I didn't enjoy the album. I mean it's got some great songs on you. Real Wild Child, which is a cover version which is a a cover version by um by an Austrian rocker called if I can get my facts right, John, John Johnny O'Keefe. Cover uh, Real Wild Child's a cover version of one of his songs. And that's a great song, you know. It, but it sounds pretty on, but on Iggy, it sounds more like Billy Idol. You know, it has that really bent, those bouncy simps with that, with that, you know, sneering, snarly voice. You know, it has that, it has that style, and it's got, and it's got some really great ballads on, yeah. 
No, it doesn't. It doesn't. I mean, Cry for Love, you know, is probably one of the, the most beautiful ballads I've ever heard in my life. You know, where, you know, Iggy, Iggy, you know, he could do, he could do any style, really. You know, you could do any stuff. I'm not, I don't want to say, I'm not, well, I say I'm not a fan of him singing in French, though. Oh, socle bleu, oh, socle bleu, the escargot, omelet du fromage, omelet du fromage, oh, 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 the way for feeding me, oh, oh, the bloody, oh, the bloody, the bloody, the bloody, the bloody, oh, the bloody, the bloody, the bloody, the bloody, you know, I don't, but other than that, he can do, he can do any style, you know, you know, Shades is a great ballad, Blah 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 is a good song. Blah 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 is a really good song. Uh, Fire Girl sounds like a depression old Pet Shop Boys song. You know, it has that sort of synth pop style. And um, what else can I say about this album? Um, oh, yeah, there's one thing I want to just come to me then. Now, I don't know, there's a clip, well there used to be a clip on YouTube of Iggy Pop on a kid's show. Because, I mean, Real Wild Child reached the top ten in the UK. You know, Iggy Pop's first top ten ever. And and as far as I know, I think it's his only top ten today. I don't, I don't, I, I, is Lust for Life ever got to the top ten reissue? I don't know. Some of you, some ass, my ass will tell me down below. But, um, so yeah, Real Wild Child reached the top ten. And there used to be a clip, I don't know if there's a clip on that clip on there now, where Iggy Pop was on a kid's show. Yeah, Iggy, can you imagine? Yeah, Iggy Pop on a kid's show, miming to Real Wild Child. And at the end, he simulated anal sex with a giant teddy bear. I kid you not. I kid you not. I tell you what, if I was in the fucking audience and seen that, I would have been fucking traumatised for life. Honestly, I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. So he was simulating anal sex with a teddy bear. It needs to be seen to be to be believed. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not joking. Honestly, I'm not. So yeah, um, don't know. Can add much more to it, really? You know. It's not his greatest album. It's not his worst album. You know, it sounds a bit dated, but it's, you know, it's, it's it's very enjoyable. Very enjoyable. So, yeah, that was Iggy Pop. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. As, as, yeah, that's what I say to my mum when she goes, when she goes, ooh, 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 all the, all the green, all, all the bins have got to go out. Got to go out um, they got to go out this week. Blah, blah, blah. You know? Oh, 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 your recycling's gonna go out this week. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 now you're probably thinking you shouldn't judge a you shouldn't judge something by its cover. No, you shouldn't no, you shouldn't judge things by its cover, no. But I just thought it just the artwork just completely hypnotized me and captivated me, I thought. And I and I don't know I don't I honestly don't know how to pronounce this band. Is it Urbanix? Urbanax, Urbanix, Urbanax, Urbanix, Urbanax, Burning Circuits. I bought, I bought this on the Isle of Wight from this, from this geezer in this, like, bric a -brac shop on, uh, where was it to? I think, yeah, I think it was Ride. And he had a, he had a, he had a collection of records and, and this one just stuck out. It just stuck out, just the cover, like a, and like an Android version of Einstein, I thought. And I just looked at the back and I was like, oh, okay. 
Polish. And I was like, Polish? I was like, ooh, that's exotic, isn't it? Polish, I thought. Because I haven't really listened to much Polish music, so I thought, oh, okay. And, um, and the sound is, well, it's different to say, well, it's different to say the least. It, it has, um, if you've ever listened to, if you've ever listened to, um, Herbie Hancock's Future Shock, then you know what sound I'm, I'm, I'm talking about. It has a very electro, electro jazz fusion sound. Very, 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 very good. Very good. With, with um, I mean, it's got fucking lean drums on you as well, so. So, lean drums. And it's got violin on you as well. Which, which I think works, I think which, which I think works really well with the synthesizer. It, it uh, complements each other really well. And probably my favourite song on you is probably the, the title track, Burning Circuits. Just fucking bonk, absolutely bonkers it is, absolutely bonk. Got this fucking vocal voice repeating, repeat, like doing a chant, repeating. I can change my sex for you. I can change my sex for you. I can change my sex for you. Dun, 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 dun. I can change my sex for you, I think. Fucking hell. I was like, ah, I'm like this. I'm like... Mad sound. Really? Polish reggae. Like a, with a pseudo reggae beat. With, 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 with viola and violins. It's not something I've ever heard in my... It's not something I've I've heard in my entire life. It's just really bizarre. Really bizarre. And, uh... You know, love don't grow on trees. I said, it's really, really, really mad. Really mad stuff. And it's not much... I, I, there's not much I know about these guys either. To be honest, there isn't much there isn't much information or biography on them on the internet. If if somebody can tell me more about this band, let me know because I like to know more. So yeah, Urban X Burning Circus. Yeah, couldn't really add much more to that really. So that's that done. Third one is. The Sweet, Sweet Fanny Adams. So yeah, this is, so this, for me, is where the band started to break out of, 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 of their, 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 um, their web of, of manufacturedness. Is that a word? Manufacturedness? That's not a word, John! That's not a word I've seen in the dictionary. Manufacturedness. What the fuck? Well, what I meant to say was, this was where they started to break out of the, um, well, not quite, but they did start to break out. This album started to sow the seeds of of them writing, starting to write their own songs because, I mean, originally, they they well the first couple of records that they made they didn't even play on they didn't even play on the records, you know, so sort of very manufactured in a way, and of course they had Chin and Chapman, who were, you know, they were sort of Chin and Chapman was sort of like. The Stockade and Waterman of the seventies, you know, they would they would write for all the they would write for all the uh, glam bands, glam rock bands of the seventies, and they wrote for the Sweet. And this album is where they start to go in a more heavier direction, you know, almost. Well, you could argue, you could you you could argue that um, that they were the first one of the first glam metal bands. To be honest, 
And it's got some great songs on yeah. Really good songs. Sweet F.A. You know, Sweet F.A. It's just absolutely brilliant. You know, it, re it really, it, it has a very metallic, almost evil demonic sound. You know, it it does it does sound like a a song that um, Diamond Head would do a few years later. You know, it has that new wave, the British he British he British heavy metal sound on it. Fucking absolutely brilliant, brilliant. Teenage Rampage, great song. Rebel Rouser, ACDC is just ACDC is brilliant. That is a great song. ACDC is about um, it's about a prospect. It's about a it's about um, a woman that's bisexual and is in a and is in a poly relationship, and it's told from the perspective of her lover. You know, she got men. The lyrics go, she got men every now and then. You know, uh, what else? She got men every now and then. She got girls all over the world, but she can't make up her mind. AC, DC, she got some other lover as well as me. AC, DC. You know, and back then, it was like, it was, that's completely ahead of its time there. You know, because of course, uh, homosexuality had been legalised in over here in Britain in the 67, late 60s, but it was still unheard of to talk about being gay or being bisexual or having an open relationship. It was, it was still, there was still a stick, a really, uh, it still carried a stigma. You know, I mean, of course, Bowie came out in, seven, in the late, uh, Bowie came out in the early 70s. And said he was gay and he always had been. So, you know, the 70s, it was sort of, people were start, sort of starting to become comfortable with their, with their own sexuality. And, you know, I mean, open relationships now are, are, as, are as common as ever now. So, ACDC, completely out of its time there. Completely out of its time. You know, great, great fucking album. You know, they, they don't get enough credit. They do not get enough. They do absolutely not do not get enough credit at all. You know, they seem to be to script. They seem to be for a lot of for a lot of music fans, the run of, of of the run of the glam rockers, and I don't think that's true at all. I honestly don't, don't think that's true at all. True at all. You know, you you listen. You listen. To, I'll give you a good example, right, of how influential, how I think Sweet have, have, have been influential. You listen to, you listen to, do you listen to Fox on the Run? The single version, not the album version on um, the next album after this. Listen to the single version of that, right? To me, it has the same structure as Van Halen's Jump. Van Halen's Jump has the same structure. It has a synth intro. It has a, it has a, it has, you know, it has a similar synth intro, similar sort of verses, similar sort of chorus, and similar, similar bridges as well. You know, and Fox on the Wrong is ten years before Van Halen's Jump. So, so these guys, big in, big in, big, in, big influence on glam metal and, and metal in general, you know, Motley Crue wouldn't wouldn't exist without Sweet, you know, bands like um, Rat, bands like um, let's see who else, Rat. Uh, I can't think of any more, but but yeah, it's, it's a great great fucking album. Really good album. Very, very, very heavy for its time. So yeah, Sweet Fanny Adams. Right, next one. Is 
20th anniversary Motown. So we gone, so we gone from, so we gone from punk, new wave, glam, to Motown. And what can we, what can we say? I mean, Motown. 60 years old this year. 60 years of Motown. 1959. That is just absolutely monumental and incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it's got some great songs on you. Really good songs. Look at that. Some great, great. Look at that. Brilliant. You know. You know. Black music is the fucking bomb. You know, 60s and 70s black music is the fucking bomb. You know, I saw some great fucking songs on you. Great songs. And it goes it goes up from 59 to 70. Yeah, 79's got Stevie Wonder, Superstition, Jackson 5, I'll Be There, Edwin Star War, Marvin Gaye, Early Through the Grapevine. Just to, just, just fucking great music, you know, absolutely great music, you know, Detroit, you know, Detroit, you know, two things that Detroit gave us, Motown and Techno, just absolutely brilliant, so yeah, that was Motown 20th anniversary, um, how many have I mentioned? One, two, four. I might do another two, because it'd be a lot too long of a voice. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, next next one is oh, Led Zeppelin four. Led Zeppelin four. So. This is probably not my favourite Led Zeppelin album. I think I think Led Zeppelin three is is one of the is for me personally is my favourite album. It's so it's so musically diverse. It's just brilliant. You know, like songs like Tangerine. You know, you got those really beautiful acoustic. Songs like Tangerine, and then you got the heart thumping hard rocker like um, Out on the Tiles. You know you got the you got the you got the blistering bombast of immigrant song. It's just just brilliant. But of course, Led Zeppelin Four is is great as well. Also known as Symbols, yeah, Mr. Mr. Jimmy Page obsessed with Alistair Crowley and the occult. I'm sure I read somewhere that Jimmy Page actually used actually bought and used to live in Alistair Crowley's house. Well, whatever turns you on, Jimmy, the occult. Some people are turned on by smothering shit. Or some people are turned on by people shitting on p other people. Some people like. You know, whatever in it, you know, that's if that's what turns that's that what turns you on, that's what turns you on. And of course this one has, you know, the big the big stay away to heaven song. So yeah. So yeah, if you ever, 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 ever in a guitar shop and you need you need somebody you need somebody's attention. You just go you just play Stay Away to Heaven and you'll go and you'll go Yo what's up dude They will they'll they'll come running So yeah and it's also got on your yeah, um the Battle of Evermore with um Sandy Denny from uh, Fairpoint Convention that's a that's a that's a nice that is a good song as well. Rock and roll, good song. What can you say? I mean, 
Well, I mean, what can you fucking say about Led Zeppelin that hasn't already been fucking said? Just, just the are just fucking brilliant. If you haven't got any Led Zeppelin albums in your record collection, you seriously, you seriously, you seriously to uh, assess your record collection differently. That's, that's all I'm saying. So yeah, Led Zeppelin 4. Good stuff on there. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, let's have a look. One more. Okay, we'll talk about... Um, yeah, right. So the next album is... Half Man, Half Biscuit. And the album is called No One Cares About Your Creative Hub, So Get Your Fucking Edge Cut. I can't do a Merseyside accent. Oh, alright, calm down, calm down. It's called No One Cares. It's alright, calm down, calm down, calm down. Oh, it's a fucking Liverpool accent. What am I on about? I can't do. I'm supposed to do Merseyside. Merseyside? Alright there, mate, alright there, mate, no one cares about your creative up, mate, so get your fucking edge cut, mate. So yeah. Jack, you know, what can I tell you about half man, half biscuit? Um this this style, they sort of like comedic comedic um comedic indie punk sort of style. They sort of like a more humorous. I would say, my in my personal opinion, a more humor, humorous version of the Smiths. So like, they got songs like um, I'll give you the titles of the songs are just fucking. They just they're funny. Some of the songs, "Depressed Beyond Tablets." You know, it's probably the most cheerful, ridiculous song I've ever heard regarding. Regarding uh, medication, depressed beyond times and beyond and beyond me gone and gone beyond pills. In other words, <laughs> in other words, I've I, I've taken so much, I've taken so much medication, lax Marty's, and I, I'm I'm just depressed. How many tablets I'm on? You know, I'm on. Oh, guess what? What am I on? I'm on quetiapine. I'm on. I'm on. Uh, I'm on Prozac. I'm on metazapine. I'm on. I'm on. Uh, pro, I'm on uh, 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 lithium. I'm on this. I'm on that. I'm on this. I'm on that. I'm on insulin. I'm on this. I'm on that. I'm on. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So in other words, the more time you should take, the more the more time you should take, the more depressed you are. So they got songs like like that, and they got. Uh, Joy Division of a Glove. Joy Division of and Gloves. Just <laughs> I don't I wouldn't mind that actually, Joy Division of and Gloves. Provided provided they don't start singing to me, love will tear love love will tear us love will tear us apart. <laughs> I'm s Ian Curtis, I don't need you to to sing to me that love can tear you apart. <laughs> God yeah, they got songs like that, and they just, they're very, you know, they have a very, like I said, a comedic, indie, folk, punk style. You know, they got, nobody sounds like Half Man, Half Biscuit. Nobody, nobody does. And this is their latest album. I think, is it from last year? Yeah, from last year. And it's just well, it's what you expect from half man, half biscuit. Just a lot of just just a lot of a lot of silliness, a lot of but it's but it's but it's good fun though, really good fun. <laughs> One of the titles, Nobbes on Quiz Shows. Bloody yeah, there have been a, there have been a few Nobbes on Quiz Shows. Yeah, name something you stuff. Turkey. Name 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 something you dance with. <laughs> Turkey. Name a place you go. Name a name a country you go abroad to. Turkey. <laughs> you know you do have some nobbies on quiz shows, like that, and like I, like I just gave you an example of. So yeah, I'll be seeing these guys in March. I can't bloody wait. I can't bloody wait at all. So yeah, I would reckon. So if you want to get into these guys, I would recommend. Um, Oh, what's, what's, that, what's that album uh, from? 
I'd recommend Acton Bono because he's got probably well, he's got two of my favourite songs on there, Acton Bono. I think it's Acton Bono, and probably no, I'm annoying me. I'm getting my fucking facts wrong, but but, but Acton Bono, I think has Joy Division Evan Gloves on there, and uh, Depressed Beyond Tablets, and has that on there. I would start with that one, or start with Back on the DJ, DHSS. You know, got some great stuff on there. So yeah, Half Man, Half Biscuit, or Jaffa Cake, Half Cake. Half biscuit. Oh dear, Jaffa cakes. Oh, I'm not being funny, Governor, but Jaffa cake, Jaffa cakes, Jaffa cakes. You don't see him in the cake section, do you? You see him in the biscuit section. So as far as I'm concerned, a Jaffa cake is a biscuit. All right there, all right there, Badger. All right there, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. And depressed beyond tablets, I'll be on beyond pills. All right there, mate. All right there, mate. I'm half man, I'm half biscuit. All right there, mate. All right there, mate. Oh, God, that was a long one. So, yeah, 36 minutes, 18 seconds. So, yeah, I'm going to tr try and keep on, like, six to eight records each video. Because you know me, I like to talk about the records. I don't, I don't just go, I don't just go, oh, I bought this, oh, bye. You know, I like to talk about them. Probably painful for you, but... Uh, you know, I'll, that's what I like to do. So, so yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.